Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Disney Dust. Disney Dwayne here, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at Palace Pets. Now, what is Palace Pets? I've seen it around, and you know, I decided to explore it a little bit more. It's obviously targeted towards like three to seven year olds, and it's based on the Disney Princess franchise, but it's its own spin off. Now, these are all the pets that belong to these princesses, but these are pets that we haven't seen in the official movies. So, like with any canon, like, you know, Descendants or Once Upon a Time, the ABC series, it's got its own universe going and its own uh, storyline going that's not supposed to be related to the official canon. So, being the hardcore Disney fan that I am, I thought to explore it a little bit more and share it with you guys to see if you guys would be interested in picking this up, like, or even sharing it with uh, some of the younger ones that you know that would be interested in this. So Palace Pets uh, has become quite a huge thing now. There are two seasons already so far of animated shorts, about three minutes each. Uh, and this is created by Britt Alcroft, uh, written by Shia Fontana. And they do design them to look like their owners. So for example, Ariel's pet would have red hair, identifiable traits like that. There are also apps available. Um, you can see toys in toy stores as well as activity packs you can download, ebooks, coloring things you can print out. So lots of activities and hours of entertainment for the young ones to explore. So these pets basically gather in a place called Whisker Haven, which is why the series is called Whisker Haven Tales. And uh, they have been sort of like summoned or taken care of by the uh, fairy hummingbird, the caretaker fairy hummingbird, Miss Featherbon. Now, I don't believe the princesses themselves appear in the series, aside from uh, their, their pictures, which are also gateways from which the pets travel to and from their worlds to Whisker Haven. I believe all princesses have pets, including Mulan uh, and Pocahontas. Now, the only princesses that do not have pets are Merida and Elena, so we've yet to see if they will add any. And the series might seem catered for girls, you know, from the whole appeal of it, because of the Disney princesses and all. But there are guy pets, so there is a male energy um, to be enjoyed as well. So let's look at the characters that belong to this wonderful franchise. Uh, and thanks to Disney.Wiki.com, from which I'm getting the information from. So here's what I want you to do before we get into the characters. We're going to start a little poll of sorts, and I want you to tell me by the end of this who your favorite character is and why. Maybe top three even if you have the time, okay? Let's start with Barry. Let's also start with Snow White's pets. Now, Barry is a little rabbit, and uh, actually during a stroll in the forest, Snow White found her hiding beneath a blueberry bush and immediately discovered her fondness for food. Barry is also very shy. Sweetie is a pony who belongs to Snow White. Uh, she's a sky blue mane and tail, light brown eyes, and wears red jewelry. A cute pony, loves pies, has a big heart, and everybody loves to watch her perform because she's talented that way. She does jumps and twirls and things like that. On to Muffin, who also belongs to Snow White. She's a puppy, and Snow White met her when the seven dwarfs found her helping a little bird who had fallen. And to compliment the puppy, Snow White also has a kitten called Honey Cake. Now, she found Honey Cake when she was digging in the royal gardens. The two are always together, and Snow White found a smart way to use all the holes this funny kitty makes in the ground. She plants new flower seeds in them, and she loves gardening with Snow White. Snow White has one more pet, the fifth one, Thistle Blossom, a hedgehog who was discovered by Snow White while she was making her way home one winter's day, just as she was beginning her hibernation. She was awoken by the warmth of the room Snow White brought her into and immediately ran to the window to observe snowflakes outside. Now we move on to Cinderella. She has a dog, or rather a puppy, called Pumpkin, a white poodle, actually, and uh, it was an anniversary present to her from the prince. Now, this glamorous puppy loves to attend royal balls, twirl, and dance. There's also a pony called Bibbidi, uh, of course, uh, given by the fairy godmother, and is Cinderella's most helpful pony and adores doing chores. What a useful pony to have, right? Now, I wonder how this next one lives with Guz and Jack, the two mice, um, because Slipper is Cinderella's kitten, who has a knack for finding pretty objects that Cinderella uses to create pretty jewels. 
So I'm sure she'd be crawling around the small little spaces that uh, Guz and Jack would be crawling along too. Not to mention Bree, who's another mouse uh, that Cinderella owns and apparently is a -a one-of-a-kind mouse who loves to play and take care of her bigger friends, the horses. And she knows a lot about them and is very loyal, which greatly impresses Cinderella after finding out she has lived in the stables for so long. Now the list continues. Are you ready for more? This is Beauty or Dreamy belonging to Aurora uh, or Sleeping Beauty. Now, she has two names. Apparently, she's named Dreamy on some merchandise. She's a kitten belonging to Sleeping Beauty, and it's a sleepy kitten for sure. Snoozing beneath some flowers is where Aurora scooped her up, and they enjoy their favorite activity together, sleeping. Bloom is a pony, and she also belongs to Aurora, a gift from Prince Philip, and the most charming horse in the stable, apparently, and a natural performer. We move on to Nuzzles, who is a fox, an orange-gold fox pup with violet eyes and a pink tail. And basically, Aurora was feeling one day homesick in the forest, so the good fairies presented her with this little fox. A little bit of trivia, she is voiced by Nancy Cartwright, who also voices Bart Simpson. We move on to Fern the Owl, And Fern sleeps, unlike other owls, in the night. Aurora met her one summer night when the little owl flew into her room looking for a quiet place to sleep. Amused by the odd little owl, she invited her to stay. Sleeping Beauty also has a puppy called Macaron, who has a very odd desire to someday gain her own wand to cast magic. This next pet, Ash the Dragon, is so fond of Aurora that she thinks of her as her mother. And that's also because Aurora found her as an abandoned egg that just hatched in the forest. We move on to Ariel's pet, starting with Treasure, her kitten. They apparently met aboard Prince Eric's ship one day when the sailors found Treasure and kept her on board. We have a little bit of a clumsy pony in Seashell who, like her owner, has always dreamed of life on land. And this is very clever, and that's because she was a seahorse before who then gained legs, just like Ariel. And that's probably why she's a little clumsy. Matey is a lavender border collie puppy. And Ariel met him when he was jumping from a boat that had just sailed away from the dock and fell into the water while Ariel was waiting for Prince Eric at the harbor. He's now taking swimming lessons from the very best. Sandy Pearl is an aquamarine seal pup wearing a seaweed headband and a pink purple seashell necklace. And uh, I believe Sandy Pearl belongs to Ariel. I feel that Palace Pets is actually doing uh, some good because it's actually teaching children to love animals and that's what we need more of, Uh, you know, seeing all the stuff that's been happening around uh, with the environment and everything. In any case, uh, we're on to Belle's pets right now. We have Teacup, who is a puppy as well, and um, well, they met one day in a village square. Teacup was entertaining a crowd by balancing apples on her head. She also loves shopping for accessories, though I'm not sure how she's going to be able to afford it. Well, then again, she is a princess's pet, so she should have some money, right? Petite, or Petite with an E, is a pony belonging to Belle as well. and They met one winter day near a frozen lake. Petite is adventurous and strong-willed, but doesn't have an easygoing temperament, and she doesn't let anyone ride her except for Belle. Still with Belle, this is Rouge, her kitten, who was found outside the castle library. And Belle loved her so much that she decided to keep her forever. Rouge loves listening and reading stories about far-off lands and also enjoys visits to Morris's messy invention room. And lastly, belonging to Belle, the newest edition is Booksy. I believe she loves reading books, so I think she would get along very well with Rouge. And she's also the only pet that wears glasses. Now we move to Jasmine, and here we have uh, one of the few male pets in a very female-dominated environment. Sultan is a tiger. Princess Jasmine found him sleeping on a pile of precious silks at the market, and though he is small, his bravery is a million times his size. Lapis is a pony also belonging to Jasmine. One evening when she was riding on a magic carpet, she saw her galloping below, and so the princess landed to greet her, and um, she basically hopped on board. And now they take magical rides and go stargazing every night without Aladdin. Hmm. So they should introduce a you know series of pets belonging to the guys as well, right? What do you guys think? 
All right, still on Jasmine, we have Taj, who's an elephant, very apt. Princess Jasmine plays hide-and-seek with Taj in the uh, palace grounds and rewards him with juicy mangoes. And if you think only Aladdin has a monkey, well, you're wrong. Princess Jasmine has Nile the monkey, and uh, he loves pranks. But when he feels loved, he can become the most loyal of friends as well. And this was how they met, and it involves Abu as well. Nile jumped out of a vase and started blowing raspberries at Abu while Jasmine was buying spices. And she realized that he behaved so naughtily because he felt alone and was looking for a friend, and so she took him to the palace. And now Abu and Nile are great friends. And this is voiced by Rob Lowe. Now, I want to say that Princess Jasmine seems to have the most number of uh, male pets. We have a zebra called Stripes, and he basically met Jasmine at a party at the Sultan's palace, and she basically invited him to stay. And rounding off Princess Jasmine's pets is Nola, a hippo. Aside from Stripes the zebra, whom we just saw, Nola is Jasmine's second pet to be an African animal, and she is one of the two female pets that Jasmine has. So we move now into kind of non-princess territory. I mean, Pocahontas, to me, is not really a princess. But nonetheless, she has her own set of pets. Windflower is a raccoon. Ooh, competing with Miko there. Uh, is a mischievous raccoon who loves exploring and playing, but she can't help getting in trouble. Now, Pocahontas was at the river when she heard a noise and saw a big frog leaping in front of her. And just then, the princess noticed something moving inside an old hollow log. And when she approached, she found Wildflower. You know, there's no mention of Miko here. I, I have a suspicion they would really get along as, you know, love mates or something. You know that part in the song where Pocahontas sings, Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grins. So I'm feeling that this bobcat is Pounce. They met very plain and simply. She just saw little Pounce holding an ornamental feather in his mouth and just found him so cute that she had to adopt him. And his weakness is when he sees a feather on the ground, he can't resist but chase it and add it to his collection. I'm starting to think that the creators of these uh, pets, for Pocahontas at least, took them directly from the songs. Because up next we have River, who was a wolf, and basically River was howling at the moon, feeling sad and lonely, till Pocahontas found her and invited her to camp. So I guess River was the wolf crying to the blue corn moon just around the river bend. Hey, if you're still here, thanks for sticking around. This is quite a list. We've only got uh, three more to go. Mulan, Tiana, as well as Rapunzel. Now, Mulan is also, to me, not really a princess because um, she actually kind of pairs up with a general, right? In any case, her pet Blossom is a panda. And her big trait is how cheerful she is. And they met when Blossom was hiding under her table. Lychee, or how we call it in Asia, a lychee, is actually named after a fruit. But she is a pony and also belonging to Mulan. Well, basically, she was getting ready for Chinese New Year celebrations. And uh, Mulan found her horse, Can, teaching this little pony to jump some high obstacles. And so Mulan basically encouraged Li Chi with a special paper lantern. Now this reminds me of a video I just saw of this uh, little girl trying to hop on a very little pony. It's so cute. She tries and tries and tries, and eventually she gets on the pony. Uh, so, you know, it's a good testament to the fact that we can overcome any obstacles, even the highest. I think the names are now starting to get inspired by fruits. We have Plum Drop next, a kitten belonging to Mulan as well, given to her by Grandmother Fa, whom she visits for tea. And since then, the two have become inseparable. Uh, Plum Drop is also still quite clumsy, but she's always ready to do her best to make up for it. Now, there's another pet that was clumsy earlier on. Do you remember who? Wrapping up Mulan's pets, we have Snowpaws, a snow leopard. And basically, Mulan saw her peeking out from behind a snow sculpture she had made. And now we move on to Princess Tiana down in New Orleans. Tiana met Lily, the kitten, one night when working in her restaurant. She tried to give her some food, but curious Lily was much more interested in the music. And Lily could even wag her tail to the beat. So that probably impressed uh, Tiana enough to adopt her. As well as Bayou, the pony, who was a gift from Naveen's family. We also have Birdadette, the bird, and although Disney Wiki doesn't say much about this bird and some of the other characters as well, if you notice, uh, I can say for sure she has a very special trait of singing. So for those of you who think I completely read off a website, well, you know, I add my own personal touch and I do credit and it's not completely true. And now we're down to Rapunzel's pets, which I think 
are the most number of pets any princess has. If I'm not wrong, there are seven. Let's look at Blondie the pony, a brave and trustworthy guard pony, also very sweet, and no one salutes as elegantly as she does. Summer is Rapunzel's kitten. She found her looking matte and dirty and basically took her to clean her up at the Royal Beauty Salon. Meadow is Rapunzel's skunk, believe it or not, and uh, basically she's never seen a skunk before that day she rescued Meadow from Eugene, who was chasing her. The princess fell in love with this unusual pet and loves parading it around the castle like a queen. Daisy is Rapunzel's puppy, and uh, it was a wedding gift, basically, from the pup thugs, and luckily the princess is just like her, and when they are together, every activity becomes special. To be honest, I don't know what just like her means, so they didn't really flesh out the trait there. In any case, Gleam is our uh, next pet, and it's a deer, and basically she found Rapunzel lost in the forest and helped her get back to the castle. She always makes sure Rapunzel doesn't get lost. That's her job. Gleam the deer, shedding light on the path ahead, I guess. Sundrop is Rapunzel's peacock, and they met when he saw her painting in the village square and couldn't help but take a closer look. And Rapunzel was, you know, intrigued by his amazing personality, and they became good friends. And now uh, they uh, spend time, uh, you know, talking about how to add elegant touches to Rapunzel's artwork. And last but not least, we have Truffles the pig. Now, I wonder how all these pets, there's so many of them, are going to get along. I mean, a pig, you know, a peacock, a skunk, they're all so different. But in any case, uh, she came across truffles one day while feeding the animals at the village farms. And while the other pigs were off playing in the mud, she noticed that truffles was in the corner sniffing flowers. And uh, they instantly had a bond. Love at first sight. And there we have it, all the different animals. And uh, you can find them in the web series called Whisker Haven, uh, which follows the adventures of all these palace pets on the Disney Junior channel or on the website, if you might. It's also available on YouTube. So the season one and two, and I'd like to hear your comments. So don't forget to leave your comments, which is your favorite palace pet and why, and also uh, anything else you might want to add, like, you know, what kind of pets would you like to see the guys have? This is Disney Dwayne for Disney Dust. Hope to catch you in the next episode, and don't forget to subscribe.